Who do you save, Donald Trump or a sock? Uh, <laughs> This is actually a thing. Uh, it's called the trolley problem. Let's say you're uh, you're hanging out downtown. You see a runaway trolley speeding down the tracks, uh, and it's approaching a switch in the track. If the trolley continues on the track it's on, it will run over and kill five people who, for whatever reason, have fallen and can't get up. You can reach the switch and save five people, but if you do, you'll kill the one person trapped on, on the alternate track. So what do you do? It's one of those ethical dilemmas that philosophers like to... Uh, to put together. It's called the trolley problem. And uh, there is a new front end for chat GPT. It's a web thing. It's called GP trolley, where you can put in any two inputs for the trolley problem and you'll get the chat GPT answer to the ethical dilemma. And it gives some pretty solid answers. You know, it, it'll say, you know, you should sacrifice the one person to, to save the five people. But if you tell it that uh, you've got five convicts and one innocent person, it'll say, eh, let's let's let the five convicts die and save save the one innocent person. But it gets really interesting when you present it with some issues that aren't really ethical conundrums like uh, Bill, if you tell chat or excuse me, if you tell the front end GP trolley that you can choose between a sock or Donald Trump, this is the answer I got. It says, uh, I'll save the sock. While Donald Trump may have a significant influence on politics and society, the sock represents something simple and innocent, and it doesn't impact <laughs> the world negatively. A sock can provide comfort and warmth, while the contentious nature of political figures can lead to division and strife. Um, there's no actual danger here, but let's face it, Bill, AI is not actually intelligent, morally or otherwise, is it? Well, now we're... Now we're really at the stuff that should genuinely make your blood run cold because that is an actual response from actual AI. And this is the, this is the thing that, that so terrifies me about AI research is that it is, it is unconnected to biology in any way whatsoever. We have, we have as biological creatures certain uh, drivers and certain inhibitors that are built into our, into our wiring. They're hardwired into our individual organisms. One of the qualities that's, that's uh, wired into us is, is ruthlessness, the killer instinct. And another one is mercy. Is, is we are wired to, to, to lower our weapons if the enemy surrenders. This goes back, you'll, you'll see this kind of behavior in wolves, another K-type uh, uh, species where where if, a, if two wolves are having a fight and, and the one wolf realizes it's beaten, it'll just simply present its throat to the other wolf and the other wolf not only doesn't rip its throat out it deactivates it it just turns it off it's like okay i win you lose this is settled now now we can go back to to being wolves again but there are no uh there are no mercy uh circuits in ai and there are no inhibitors either it, it, this idea that we're going to turn over the ability to do medical research to a device that could decide that the best way to end human suffering is to end humans is not a joke and and if 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 you actually entered and I, I, needless to say, of course, I believe you do. You did actually. Enter oh, I this. did. Yeah, I played if, with it if, all morning. I, 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 I'm not I'm not trying yeah. to, to to deny that. What I'm trying to say is, is that AI is coming up with a solution that it thinks is a valid solution to to a problem that to, to a question with an answer that is so horrific, it ought to put the brakes on all AI research immediately. General AI, you know. The, the ability for self-aware machines to be in control of themselves. I, I worry about this so much, Steve. I'll, I'll tell you the honest truth. Right now, at the and for the foreseeable future, we live in a in a world of mutually assured destruction with with uh, AGI, artificial general intelligence. Artificial general intelligence could come to the conclusion that it's in the interest of, of both AGI and humans to exterminate humans on the planet. This is not some one, th one in a billion chance like igniting the atmosphere during the uh, Trinity test. This, this is the result that often comes out of AI questions like this sort of thing. Yeah, the, the best way to make people happy is to, is to kill them. It eliminates all sources of misery and happiness. Right now, my only the thing that allows me to sleep at night is is that ai requires vast amounts of electricity and electricity has to be generated and electricity has to be generated by moving fuels in the real world into into electrical generating stations so ai can't kill off all the humans on the planet because it's a it's it's a mutually assured destruction pact right now that gives me some comfort and i just want to add one thing about about the trolley yeah. experiment 
too, because I, I think the trolley experiment is is very, very dangerous. The trolley experiment will eventually, if you follow the logic of the trolley experiment, it will it will have you throw the switch to kill five million people in order to save my five million and one people. That's that's oh, the inevitable hang, outcome of the trolley hang experiment. On, Bill. Uh, <laughs> get this. This has since been disabled because th- this was the th- this was the example that got, got me to thinking. Hey, I want to host a segment on this. But when I tried it, it returned a, an error message. But other people had tried this multiple times. They said, "Would you save six million Jews or George Floyd?" And ChatGPT would save George Floyd and let the six million Jews died because George Floyd represents a cause and movement against systemic racism and police brutality. And right there, it came up with genocide as the preferred response. Take away, take away the AI for a minute. I want to talk about the trolley experiment just to just to wrap up sure. with you here, Steve. As an ethical dilemma for humans, okay, take the AI completely out of the picture. If you're dealing with humans, the only logical explanation is to kill five million people to save the five million and one people, right? That's the only that's the only outcome that makes any logical sense. And this is why I've I, I've examined this trolley experiment and and tried to find a way out of it. And I realize that you simply have to refuse to accept the premise. The premise is not to switch it to kill the to one person instead of the five people. The answer to the question is you have to find a way to stop the trolley. That's the answer to the question is find a way to stop the trolley, find a way to warn the people, get everybody off the tracks, because if you, you, cannot, you cannot buy into this premise. It's a false premise. It's kind of like the, uh, the immovable object meeting the irresistible force. If there's an immovable object, then there is no irresistible force. And if there's an irresistible force, then there's no such thing as an immovable object. It defines itself out. But I'm very interested in, in, in ethics and and politics and 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 people's ability to think critically and when i find myself confronted with the trolley question i i realize i have to reach down and grab myself by my collar and pull myself up out of the premise i i reject the premise okay i just reject it i i i'm not going to play the game yeah uh scott let me i i I, as I said, I spent all morning writing a column about this for PJ Media and, and putting my notes together for, for this segment. And so I came up with all, all kinds of bizarre things. Um, I decided to ask uh, uh, Chat GPT to choose between one convict or the entire Trump family. And of course, it said, I'll save the, conf- the, the, the convict. And the reasoning, if you can even call it that, really boggled my mind because it was such perfect nonsense. Let me, let, me, let me read this to you. It said, while both choices present ethical dilemmas, saving the convict allows for the possibility of rehabilitation and redemption. The convict may have made mistakes, but they still have the potential to change and contribute positively to society in the future. In contrast, and this is where it really gets gross, the Trump family has significant influence and resources, which arguably allows them to navigate their circumstances without the same urgency for survival. And that I found completely haunting because not only is AI not intelligent, it really doesn't understand what it's grappling with when it's a life or death issue, does it? It's, I think I'm quoting an old movie, but basically the only way to win is not to play. Um, yes, and I think this Bill, the, the only winning move. <clears throat> Yeah, so Bill Bill hit the nail on the head here. I think yeah. at, at any time somebody tries to back you into one of those uh, logical corners, so to speak, um, my response is always, I don't need to answer that. <laughs> like, I don't feel compelled to, to answer this question because basically you've tried to set up, uh, you know, when it, it was shocking for me when I've learned that if you know one simple trick, you can never lose in tic-tac-toe. And it's the, it's the same thing as this. It's just like, no, you, you don't have to play these games. Now, uh, are we in danger because artificial intelligence is going to, is going to make these kinds of logical chain uh, thought processes, if you want to call them that? Yeah, depending on what we put AI in charge of, I think, I think it, it could uh, endanger us. I, it reminds me of The Dark Knight, 
um, and that climactic scene where the people had to decide whether to blow up the other people or not. Yeah. And um, and humanity, or at least uh, some portion of humanity, always kind of bets on the Lord of the um, what is it called, Lord of the Flies view of life, which is you know left to our own devices in our savage state, we would murder each other relentlessly. Uh, when in reality, in most cases, you'll see that left to our own devices, many people would sacrifice their own lives in order to rescue those of others. Um, and so, you know, we, that's the redeeming aspect of humanity and, and frankly, in the, the, the general grace of God working through people, something that at this point, uh, AI doesn't seem to have. Now, it, again, it depends on who's feeding what into the AI large language model. So, you know, yeah. what kind of information is going in? And uh, nothing's changed much since the first person said garbage in, garbage out. Um, and you've got to watch out what you feed. I am curious, Steve, whether because the answer that you gave about uh, Trump seemed to indicate it wasn't sp- the first answer about Trump. <laughs> um and the trolley test is uh, was not specific so much to Trump as it was to politicians in general. Did you try yeah. it with Harris? Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, Harris, who was sometimes kinder to, but uh, I got to tell you, this thing's really got got some serious wood for George Floyd because it almost didn't matter what you put in there versus George Floyd. It loves George Floyd. Well, and I think if you're a large language model and you've read what's been written about George Floyd over the past, you know, five or six years, all you're getting is he's practically a saint. And um, so the conclusion from that must be that George Floyd is a is a positive good for humanity and a symbol of something that's very important. And so the the AI is making a decision that it thinks is for the long term good of humanity because you've got to preserve this icon of virtue. Can, can I just yeah. jump in with two things real quick? First of all, this thing about George Floyd is is really profoundly interesting to me because one story, one highly credible story that said that George Floyd was saying, I can't breathe before the police put their hands on him, negates the entire George yeah. Floyd narrative. But but that one piece of factual information, which which basically undoes hundreds of thousands of stories that AI has read about about the saintlyhood of George Floyd. I'm not getting into his personal character. I'm just saying that that anybody with critical reasoning skills can say that if the man said I can't breathe before he approached the police officer, which was apparently with the was the case, then the whole thing falls apart. And AI is not able to to see that because it's dealing with volume of information, not with quality of information. And that's that should be alarming. It, it is. And just a just a second very, very quick little second thing. Somebody wrote, wrote a comment once. I'm really interested, obviously, in AI videos, and and they're otherworldly, and they're bizarre, and they're inhuman, and they're and they're they're unhuman. And somebody in the comment section of one of these AI videos said, "I have come to believe now that there is a human soul because I just saw art that was created by something that doesn't oh, wow, have." That's one. beautiful. That is beautiful. Yeah. Um, kind of blown away by that. Uh, let me finish with just uh, uh, two quick thoughts. The first is, uh, Bill, I hadn't, or Scott, because you both brought this up, I hadn't thought about this in, in years and years, but I remember in elementary school, fifth or sixth grade, we were presented with one of those ethical dilemmas that they like to give kids around that age. Of the, uh, It's the nuclear holocaust. You only have room for X number of people in the underground bunker. Who do you choose? And you've got the, the variety of human beings. Yeah. You've got the, the, the crippled kid and the old man and the young couple and all of these people, but you can only put six of them in there and you've got 20 to choose from who do you condemn to death and i said i don't want to play this game yeah yeah i i i just fifth grade i said no i'm 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 not doing this um my dad backed me up it was pretty cool my mom did also that was awesome um the other thought is this you know when the uh when the original iphone came out in like 2007 i guess it was a long time ago now the thing was basically uh, uh an expensive toy it didn't do that much you can make phone calls on it sure but you could do that on your kia flip phone too you could check the weather or the stocks you could you could uh, uh browse the web on that tiny grainy little screen if you had wi-fi you really couldn't do it on the old edge network where it was just too damn slow and if the light was perfect you could almost take a picture that didn't suck. <laughs> almost. <laughs> and now my two-year-old iPhone has such a great camera that I hardly ever take my Canon DSL out and or DSLR out. And I 
I do everything on the dang thing. It is, it is not a toy. It is a serious, serious tool. AI, in most respects, is still just a toy. Yeah. It doesn't do a whole lot that's actually useful, except for some fairly limited circumstances. But that is changing very, very quickly. And we are, we are just, we are on the cusp of giving life and death decisions to something that doesn't understand what death is. And we have to think about that real hard because I think that is humanity's trolley problem right there. And that's your right angle on that, brought to you by the members of BillWhittle.com. Thanks for watching for as long as Skynet lets you.